It's uh, my uh, pleasure to introduce Dr. Polani from uh, Finland. Uh, Dr. Polani is uh, one of the most known uh, meat scientists in the world today, and we are fortunate uh, to have him talk to us. I asked him to send me a little bit of his biography, and um, I was surprised to see that he's been in the business for 52 years. So I don't know too many people who've uh, spent so much of their career time on this. Um, he also told me that uh, he's going to retire by the end of this month, and that is going to be his last lecture. So uh, I don't believe him because I heard him retiring uh, or planning to retire quite a lot. Uh, and I hope he, did, he doesn't because he is, uh, has so much knowledge. Uh, so all his career he spent at the university there in Finland. Uh, he definitely put Finland on the map of meat science. Finland is a small country with five and a half million people, but uh, he definitely made a name for Finland. He has extremely important contribution to the meat science area, working on water holding capacity, uh, just to name one main topic there, and really uh, helped a lot to increase our understanding of this. Uh, that is also part of this project. A lot of people don't realize. I have some first-year students at the University of Guelph, and I ask the question, how much water there is in the meat? In meat? And I get results, you know, 20%, 30%. But a lot of them are pretty shocked to hear that it's 75%. Anyway, so just without more, more, more introduction, I would ask our friend, uh, Ovo Polani, to start his talk. Thank you very much for the kind introduction. Uh, I, I'm very grateful to the uh, organizer who invited me for this, this uh, seminar, because I'm not expert on this field, so I had to read very many books and articles about this most interesting article, uh, uh, theme. Um, one of those were uh, uh, Pekka Kuusi's uh, paper, This World or Man, that has been translated in, from Finnish to English. He said that um, there, is, there is cosmic evolution taking place, it's following the natural laws, it's universal, it's very slow, and it is one way. Based on that, there is another uh, world or evolution which is biological. Uh, it, it, it is functioning through the genes, it's local, it's or to global, it's also slow, and it is one way. I will talk about that la more later. But you need water, water is the key key thing, carbon, oxy, oxygen, nitrogen, and energy. And the energy comes from, from sun. And the temperature range is uh, as extreme, minus 10, and could even be uh, 100 degrees centigrade. But these areas are actually for microbes, not for larger. Uh, cell systems. Uh, then, on the top of this uh, will be uh, and is cultural evolution. It's imitation. It's uses teaches learning, and it's innovating. It's national. It's accelerating, and it's reacting. It's not any more one way. I have suggested myself uh, on the top of these couple of levels, uh, the techno virtual evolution, which is innovating, developing, and it's becoming independent. It's global, it's very fast, and it's free. And that one is developing again something else what's 
would would probably be digital. Uh, it's abstract, it's multidimensional, it's unlimited, and it's it has actually no time in it, in the system. So, um, uh, human beings are here in, in the, uh, uh, partly with biological evolution, although we are part of uh, biology. Cultural evolution and techno-virtual uh, evolution, it's purely, purely human and more or less we will be here in the abst abstract uh, digital uh, evolution as well, but I, I'm afraid it will be more and more independent. So about the food, uh, it, during the biological evolution, uh, the food was gathered and hunted, so something also fish. Uh, the, uh, in cultural evolution, the quality and the food was produced and processed. And then uh, coming up to our, our level, this uh, and last sensory, the properties of the food have been in, in focus. And there was, has been science and development on, on these areas. And what will happen next? That we don't know yet, but uh, I suppose there will be more synthetic and uh, products that try to imitate uh, the natural products as well. Uh, one way could be the different types of cell cultures. So, but let's see what will happen. Uh, about the biological principles and evolution, these are now important for, for this uh, subject I'm talking about. Evolution, the biological evolution is accidental and random as such. And it is important to notice that it has no purpose, but it has a very strong feedback control once it has happened. And if the uh, change, the bi uh, biological change is not beneficial, there will be uh, strong punish punishments, even extinction of uh, uh, the distinction of the uh, uh, species. Uh, meaning that the species will disappear. Circumstances have created and create uh, the evolution, not the other way around. And then they tested 740, uh, uh, 24. So that should be remembered uh, uh, later. Man has turned to be an exception, and perhaps only temporarily. And this has may not have, uh, have been particularly good for the perspective of sustainability of the global biosphere. So what are these uh, basic functions in biology? It's food supply, every Everybody needs to be bound to the food supply. Protection, shelter and, and protection for any, uh, any kind of uh, dangers. Reproduction, pre pre reproduction uh, naturally to, to continue and in, especially in case of humans, information, but not only. These are needed for biological evolution. So here we see some evolution that has taken place with, for, uh, in homini uh, during four million years. So what we can see that the bodies as such are very similar all the way. And this is understandable because the basic biochemistry and physiology of uh, living animals have been 
about the same for about 600 million years. But what, what has happened in, in Humini is the, uh, taking, has been taking here so that the head has changed. Here we have a large, large, let's say, eating mechanism and small uh, volume for brains. But that is gradually changing so that the eating system will get smaller and smaller and uh, the brain volume, the brain area will increase. And then this is caused by the change of food over these, these years to softer food. And this change has also made it possible to communi communicate orally, to speak. And uh, therefore we can see that there is a development, but the development is here on the upper end of the human, human being. And all these uh, uh, character men have been lived in good collaboration with the, with the environment. It's only the last one here, Homo sapiens, the wise human, has now uh, acted as that way that it seems to be a danger for for the whole globe and uh, its biosphere. So let's go back to the uh, uh, what has happened. First, there was gathering, later hunting and fishing. And over these four million years, there has been about uh, a hundred thousand generations and uh, roughly about half of the uh, people ever existed on the globe. So the hominy has been, as they say, about 150 billion or something like that. Uh, and for, for uh, gathering, almost everyone participates. So everybody was taking care of their their food as soon as they started to walk. So they are, were using fruits of the nature, plants, insects and small animals and later fish. Uh, but then they started also to hunting and all the food were cooked. There were drying was used and smoking was used and uh, then the food was eaten when it was available. And now we take, take a, a closer look uh, and the first period was from 4 million to 2.8 million years uh, from, from our side, backwards. Uh, the hominy lived in tropical area in Afri Africa, in small flocks or greater families. They ate seeds, fruits, roots, insects, small animal and cadavers. They moved around, everything was carried with, or sometimes they lived in caves. They had some uh, little little house houses, they ha were clothed. And the use of fire was used uh, uh, in food preparation. Um, food supply determined the population number. The flock or village people number was usually about 40. If more, some people just left. And. Um, uh, the birth rate was so that woman was usually having another baby you know, in the world of 3.5 years that kept the population number and, and the stress for, for the woman was not uh, too high. In agriculture later the same uh, rate was 2.5 per uh, uh, 
been uh, here and now currently it's p possible to take get uh, one per year this one here means that uh, it took uh, two and five years to get another f uh, another child the life expectancy uh, was lower children uh, only 50 percent of them grew up to uh, to adults and the adults lived another 20 years so that uh, they uh, the average age was 40 years so very different from our lives there were fights again against other villages which also meant some genetic mixing with the with the flocks then the same paleolithic era continued the time from uh, 2.8 million years uh, up to 8 8000 before christy born that is 10000 years from now then, then 2.8 million years ago they became suddenly a very uh, uh, hard drought uh, to the area where uh, homini lived and also the temperature uh, got lower larger animal hunting was the only way to survive the people understood that they cannot use uh, grass for for their their food but then uh, they saw that uh, other other animals used uh, uh, grass and then they realized hmm we can let them eat and then we kill them and then eat so we get the f food from that way they used uh, the people still uh, used uh, uh, movable living food supplied continued to determine the population number uh, uh, diseases also also controlled the uh, population numbers six thousand people created a disease and the survivors survivors uh, uh, just left uh, there was a 50% rule for hunters. If the number of hunters were uh, was uh, smaller than 50%, so that they uh, compare with the people staying at, at the camp, so they they left. They the hunters left. They did not want to feed uh, too large group of people. The uh, size of brains increased threefold uh, uh, originally in a, uh, in the start of the paleolithic time uh, the, the size was 450 cubic centimeters but in the end uh, close to the modern human being it turned to be 1300 1400 cubic meters and that that was a big big ch change in relation to body size and the most important thing in that was that the energy consumption uh, of the brains were uh, was and still is about 20 percent of the resting energy and this large uh, brain size uh, caused the rapid development of intelligence that became a cultural evolution uh, the energy use of brains per per weight unit is nine times higher compared the other parts of the body so brains are using a lot of energy and this has uh, then meant that condensed food 
was a must for survival. So humans needed, needed a lot of energy, vitamins and minerals. But, the, but it should have been uh, condensed to keep the food amount small. That can be seen here. Uh, the uh, quantitative uh, comparison of length of uh, and surface area of gastrointestinal tract. Um, intestinal length of body uh, divided by body length is, is in cattle 20 to 1, horse 12 to 1, dogs and humans are much lower. And then the same thing. Uh, gastrointestinal surface area, body surface area. Cattle 3, 1, 2.21, here much less than 1. And then continuing um, gorilla and chimpanzee and gut volume uh, compared with humans. And these two are uh, herbivora of the Vegeta vegetarians and humans are something else. So stomachs are about the same size. Small, small intestine uh, where the food mass was absorbed is low with gorilla and, and chimpanzee, but l very large in humans. This is indicating that it's that the food must be m m more uh, readily absorbable. Kekum, it's not uh, relevant in, in uh, humans, and colon. Colon is much, much larger with, with apes, and there they uh, ferment the, and absorb the plant material. And with human, uh, humans, it's, it's much smaller. So this means that many, man is physiologically omnivora, it's not uh, herbivora, it's not carbi uh, carnivora. That is the point of uh, and the story of archaeology and physiology. So, how to get that food? Then thinking, thinking, uh, what is the best uh, and most effective way to get it. So uh, this table has calculated what is the return rate of one hour work, how, how, to, uh, how many kilocalories a man can get in uh, uh, using one uh, hour for working. First peccary, which is one kind of pig, and uh, it, it gives uh, 65,000 uh, kilocalories per hour. Antelope, uh, about half of that or less. Rabbit, e e even even less. Squirrel is already a very little little one, and then the roots is are about the same than taking squirrels. Um, fruits are also depending how much sugar they have, and or fats. And then um, snakes, they might be difficult to catch. And then birds, even more difficult to catch, uh, but they are lower than pickery. Birds, the idea to be bird is to be as light as possible. Um, and seeds, it, they are much, much uh, less uh, what you can get in one hour. So. It was just good economy to hunt and get condensed food. So uh, how about the nutrition, the paleolithic uh, intake of selective nut nutrients with current, I would call that so-called Western diets. Protein, carbohydrate, fat, uh, protein was higher, carbohydrate the same, fat 
less because the uh, prey animals are usually not very fatty. <coughs> they are lean. And the polyvinyl saturated, saturated uh, ratio was very fine with pyolytic uh, food compared to the Western type uh, diets. Then uh, vitamins, all of them are higher or much higher than, than the current diets. Then uh, minerals, the same, iron, zinc, calcium, potassium, and fiber as well was very high due to the plant material in their, their food. So this is a good lesson. The only di uh, difference is sodium, which was relatively low uh, in, in the Paleolithic intake because they did not add salt into their diet. But in, in the current, current Western diets, almost everywhere, the uh, sodium is too high. The, the low intake here says why uh, we do not have an efficient way to get rid of sodium because it was not necessary. And this time of the modern salt adding uh, way of, of preparing food has not had time enough to uh, uh, establish us a effective way to get rid of sodium and that means that there will be high pressure with with uh, high, high blood pressure with the problems uh, derived from the, that so agriculture so uh, the uh, agriculture is about 10000 years old and which means 400 gen generations only but it it is now with much bigger a global uh, number of people so that is about the same than the four uh, four million years before that and about half of the people have uh, needs to participate every day to the agricultural work work in agricultural systems so the old times uh, the calculation was that about two square kilometers per person was needed for getting the food. That means that the flock, uh, flock of uh, uh, 40 people needed 80 square kilometers to get enough food. But now when agriculture started, less uh, land was needed for, for uh, feed a certain number of people. So the system was that the fruits of land agri uh, uh, was added agricultural uh, production and there was food preparation and then eating. But at the same time, in variable amounts, gathering still, hunting and fishing was used and still is used in, in many, many places. Uh, the, the food was produced by man and the meat consumption decreased. And then it caused a uh, nutritional uh, 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 quality uh, was decreased. So let's think about that more a little bit later. The population uh, growth uh, during the agricultural uh, era was very large. Humans started to cultivate plants and even select the best plant individuals already 10,000 years ago. So there was some kind of breeding. Uh, population in the populated permanent residential areas grew quickly 
and and the world population grew, grew up uh, 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 up to ten times in five thousand years. And at the same time, further environmental changes took place. The ice, ice age ended, but however, the number of prey animals decreased. Uh, and uh, this is caused by the fact that the, the hunting continued. But because the number of people increased, and remember I said that two square kilo kilometers per per person was required to to hunt for hunting and other other kind of foods so although it was a mixture of agriculture and um, um, paleolithic lifestyle that has an uh, influence that the prey animals uh, number decreased this is the first time when humans really started to have an uh, have an influence on the global biosphere, those uh, in the, those areas where they lived at that time. So, what was to do? The evolutional pressure uh, uh, used the brain animal who was able to find other types of of uh, uh, systems. It, it means that they, they find something else than that if something else was animal husbandry. Uh, about 8,000 years first dogs and probably they they have been uh, being there with hunters before and then sheep started to be hanging around close to the humans because that provided better food supply and security against beasts. And then pigs and cattle came there about 5,600, uh, 6,000 years ago. And there was also animal breeding to some extent, with or without purpose uh, at that time. So the food supply improved, but the nutritional quality decreased because the nutrition based on mainly uh, uh, crop products. Hunting, fishing and domestic animals provided meat and milk, but less than during the hunting area. And milk was not involved at that time. Information was transmitted with the growing societies from generation to generation, so that was an information evolution. But the negative side was that the domestic animals and pollution in these airy areas increased the diseases, as they do today, when there is a large uh, scale animal production, then they are reservoirs from, from new diseases that also are transmittable to humans. And the pollution that was a little bit compensated that way that uh, the agriculture was half moving because when the land turned poor, uh, then people moved to another place, but it, it the uh, speed of moving from one place to another was much slower than during the uh, 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 real pre uh, uh, paleolithic time. However, the development increased security, food security, and other security. And then uh, the, the, the use of tools and animals in uh, production work, first cattle and then horses, that caused a higher productivity. And then the, uh, there was also a cultural evolution. There were bosses there in the villages and, and they, using their power, 
took took the surplus of food from from the weaker people and this caused a little bit loss of motivation and some kind of diversified breeding of humans because those who who were stronger were able to have more children by can we say stealing food from from others so where are we now this is the modern food generation food and food chain which is six to eight or about that uh, size uh, of, of the uh, human development it is you could say 18 billion 20 billion people but not all of the people on globe have, uh, even today have are uh, enjoying the modern food chain with uh, its full capacity so there is use of resources this agriculture other type of food production import export to balance the diet a food industry distribution retail catering and now not many any more eaters but consumers the uh, pro, uh, goods are going that way to the consumers and money is going that way so it's different um, earlier it has been so that there was an ecological niche that where the circumstances have uh, decided the biology of the people and also the possibilities to uh, get that uh, kind of food was the selective factor factor and when the food was end in the end so the the species does just disappear now humans with that kind of chain and other things linked to the development has m made it that way that the ecological niche does not really exist anymore the f the f walls are have uh, are fallen and uh, so we are able to live live and create our personal ecological niche wherever on this globe but not only so what we have done here that we are consuming with uh, with our high uh, large populations so much that the ecological niche uh, walls are outside the globe which are mean, me meaning that we consume too much and this will create a depth for uh, uh, for the coming uh, generations and we must react on that another aspect is that th there is a food abundance we have double the number of overweight people in the world compared to people that are starvation uh, undernourished that another aspect that needs to be corrected very soon so on the on the on the way to modern times the poor nutrition has been dominant for the large majority of people the development of good nutrition has been available to minority especially in the old times over the thousand years and it is the same still today as i just mentioned however crop production hunting and animal husbandry at the same time has been there and the low nutrition has been co uh, complemented with with hunting and animal product uh, husbandry products and there is not one and only diet nutrition in the paleolithic per period was was not in the paleolithic period nor during the agricultural era and not even today either so there are so many diets in uh, on this globe at the very moment 
There has been uh, some genetic development in nutrition physiology during the Paleolithic era. I told already that there are other developments taking place, but not so much physiologically, and also agricultural era, but not much at that uh, short period of time. So probably some physiological evolution and adaptation, but I say once again, there has not been time for a physiological adaptation to the modern diet yet. Although there has been a large number of people affected, but only few generations. Possibly it has been some epigenic uh, genetic changes. Humans are different compared to other animals. In other animals, the system is that there is an ecological niche and it's constantly trying to keep those properties that uh, in a way keep the ecological niche for them. But humans are different. They, they are families with one uh, man and one husband, usually. And this means that the, the population is very diversified. They are not copies of each others. And this variability gives the possibility to, in a way, have more options to live their lives. And this is the special uh, uh, property of humans, the variabil variability, and uh, uh, th that is taking always place when a ch uh, child is born. It's not a copy, it's, it's different from uh, others. And the other one, the property is that humans are brain animals, and these two things have been behind the first development of mankind. So, the, what, what has been the result of that? When we see the number of the pop world population over the last 12,000 years, so the times before uh, 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 the agricultural area, there were not so many people well, some, some millions only. And then, um, uh, then it stayed like that, uh, then the growth was very low, but then it started, to, uh, started somehow, and during Christie Bourne 2000 years ago, there was less than, a little bit less than 200 million people. And then it started, started I would say slowly to uh, grow up, and uh, the ver first uh, billion was uh, about 200 uh, years ago, and then it started to go upwards like a like rocket. And today we have almost 8 billion. Next year, 2023, there will be 8 billion people on globe. And during my lifetime, it has been threefold the population number has turned threefold. So it's, it's uh, a very huge increase within one, one life. About meat, I have here uh, all meat and a very much shorter time, uh, time span than uh, the previous slide, 60 years. During the six, uh, 60 years, the total meat consumption has uh, turned 2.4 times, times, and that during that time the population number has been less than three times. So there is an increase per capita growth as well. But this is mainly caused by by uh, the increase of population number. Uh, and the meat has been produced in uh, both American continents and uh, in China, as well as is in, in Europe. This would be a large ball if all these are, will be put in, um, into one ball. And here we can also see that the production in many countries, for instance in Africa, are, is very 
is very low actually. Here is 1.2 billion people. So um, there are differences in that respect. So with, our, uh, with beef, beef is now uh, 92 metric tons, which is 3.4 times the one that was 60 years ago. Uh, and with pork, it is five times, so it has increased, increased like this during the 50 years, and it's a little bit higher than um, beef uh, production. And then poultry was very low in 61, and now, uh, six years later, it's 16 times higher globally. And the growth seems to continue still. And this is a little, little shorter time where we see that beef stays relatively stable like pork and now it's it's decreasing due to the African uh, African swine fever. Uh, sheep is uh, increasing but it's not that large and then uh, poultry is increasing and increasing year after year. So um, Biomasses and environment, that is also an aspect that must be taken into the consideration. For mammal uh, biomass, pro the, the production animals are 60% of the total. Humans, 36, which is large number, and wild animals uh, is, is 4%. So it used to be the time when wild, wild animals were larger, uh, larger in quantities than this one, and humans was uh, was not not relevant at, at all. But now the uh, relationships have strongly changed. With birds, production animals seventy percent, and wild birds uh, thirty percent. This is the uh, current situation. And the environmental relevance, these results are from FAO, um, the long shadow of, of uh, animal production. Uh, so they are almost 20 years old, but anyhow, they, they calculated that 26% uh, of emerged land is uh, uh, used by, by um, animals as, as a pasture. And that is a good thing because that's providing uh, food for humans. But the, on the other side uh, of arable lands, about one third is used for domestic animals and not uh, a direct production of food for, for humans. So this is uh, a way to get uh, condensated food that uh, animals in a way absorb the nutrients and and condense them in their bodies and then human humans eat them but this production has it is uh, um, black side as well about 18 percent or more or less depending on the uh, way of calculation uh, calculations but 18% of the CO2 equivalents, which is CO2, methane, and N2O, uh, tear gas, uh, are produced by, by um, um, humans, so-called anthropogenic uh, values, or those that uh, humans have created 18% of that comes from animal husbandry. From that, roughly one third is caused by deforestation, which is land use. One uh, 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 direct CO2 methane uh, emissions and one third of the, of the load is NO2 emissions. And the Worst thing in that respect is beef, uh, that beef production and dairy products. 
So these are facts uh, to that extent that the number uh, slightly vary, but uh, it's uh, they are there. So some, uh, therefore, I use the word cognitive dissonance, which is a known known um, phenomenon in human being. It is denying facts based on own beliefs and values, saying no, I don't believe it cannot be like that because I don't want them be true. So we are angels, we don't do anything bad, but sometimes there is the facts are against that and they can be focused where you are looking for and if you continue denying without your noticing they will grow and they will grow and then they soon will uh, fill you, the whole land, uh, life landscape in the front of you. These facts do not disappear. You must cope, cope uh, with them and try to alleviate the problems. So, paleolithic to modern nutrition physiologically. The availability of food or meat has been the main target and still is for the large part of the global population. The prey animals are usually very lean because the surplus of energy is used for proliferation. Uh, the nature doesn't want that animals are large because when they have very large muscle larger than they need or they have fat more than, the, than they need they have to carry that with them wherever they go seven, uh, 24 and that, that's not effective so it's better to optimize the body size to be uh, good in the ecological niche they are living in. So uh, Paleolithic humans were able to eat tough meat and plant materials. They did not get together and speak, uh, speak about uh, shear force or water holding capacity or things like that. They just were happy if they had food and they had better, better uh, teeth and and stronger muscles in in the face area to eat that meat. All kinds of edible plant and animal plants and uh, animals were used. Uh, fishing actually started very late, says the says the history evidence. Uh, about 100 years ago, but that's questionable, but uh, there are no historical evidences, uh, evidence for uh, that. Um, overweight atherosclerosis, high blood pressure, cancer, diabetes were, were not relevant because the life expectancy was low, there was no time for them. Some physiological adaptation has been taken place, as I said, during the Paleolithic era and agricultural era, but again, not for the current Western diet yet. So, um, uh, Dr. Lou Hoffman would be better to talk about these things, but I just show some slides uh, quickly. Uh, insects uh, are, are still an important source of animal type protein on uh, protein uh, about 2 billion people even today use insects uh, for food. Lizards, uh, other insects, frogs, uh, rats and mouse, all these will be eaten. Then pigs of different types and here we see the modern pig how different it is from the wild pig. Uh, soon they would need a, a third set of feet here. Uh, uh, then there are beef animals of, of the Bos taurus and Bos indicus, 
different types and uh, bred or wild wild types of the same same type of animals and then there are many other animals you name it there are hundreds of different animals that can be used uh, as um, uh, prey animals and less so for for production animals and then there is the, the constant discussion whether it uh, the agriculture so, should be organic organic and extensive or factory farming organic is nice for the nature has very uh, uh, good things but but it is much less uh, effective uh, than uh, f factory farming the the relationship for protein production is something like one to ten or so, uh, something like that maybe it should be something in between so that we have production animal but not necessarily those that are like this Belgian blue, blue in extreme cases. And here comes our good friend uh, Broiler into the picture. I will talk about that later. The wild animal body does not usually change its basic properties. In its e ecological day, they should have been as well as possibly the same that they have always been so that they fit to their ecological niche niche bones uh, muscles supporting systems do not change much that's the idea of ecological niche and then if something is more then then there will be no more individual will not uh, win individuals not m more uh, weight very uh, individual uh, some possibly some uh, species collect variable uh, uh, amounts of fat if it improves uh, the survival and proliferation in that ecological niche. And on the other side, muscles may be used for energy in extreme hunger rather than die out. So uh, this is the final, final source of protein if, if uh, hunger, in hunger situation. But the modern, modern agriculture provides a secure and balanced nutrition as well as a life free of, from uh, environmental risk to the production animals. So the original, mo most of the original restrictions may not be that relevant, even including the physiological ones. But these animals are still uh, part of the uh, physiological life. So let's see that one. Here is a, a, a study that has been done uh, uh, s over sixty years, or sixty years in 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 a university in USA. So uh, the same hybrid, nineteen fifty seven, it grew grew uh, from. Uh, uh, hatching to 56 days and resulting in about 900 gram bird. Today the same hybrid that has been selectively bred but still same hybrid uh, grows uh, uh, in the same time to, to over 4 kilograms. And this has had uh, physiological changes. The body can take that and then uh, it, this has resulted in wooden breast syndrome, white striping syndrome and spaghetti meat syndrome. It is the uh, hypothesis uh, of today that it's most strongly linked to the high growth rate and this will I think pro be proven pretty soon. So, thinking of the animal animal breeding, so I would say that the question is where do we draw the line? So, and this is a good example which has, to my 
understanding reached the line already. So where do we draw the line in our lives in general? So let's go back to the history. Uh, there are uh, in e Egypt uh, uh, drawings about slaughtering about 5,000 years ago and in game uh, paintings they could be uh, older than that. But I suppose this and we uh, I suppose that uh, these activities have been much older but historical evidence is missing. Uh, the Stone Age at about uh, 3000, uh, 4000 before Christi ended and the slaughtering technology started to develop when the use of metals started. And uh, slaughtering and product making was a usual skill in every household, but it turned then soon to be a local profession for some some people in, in that village or tribe. That kind of tradition still exists. Uh, as the modern industry is about 100 years old and is not covering the whole field globally uh, either at, at, at the moment. And for instance, for instance, most hunted meat is still slaughtered and handled by non-professional, not to meant home cooking that is done everywhere. So some uh, photos of, of uh, mm, uh, slaughtering. So my meat hygiene and meat hygiene is the starting point of meat science. Actually, there it started people uh, specializing on on uh, meat and it at the home of meat science was veterinary uh, science very early it was found that meat is perishable and may cause diseases somehow preferably uh, uh, meat was used immediately after cut and the hunting was a everyday work that resulted that the meat was cooked when it was still pre rigor and uh, then the uh, the meat was tender or tenderer and um, uh, also the water holding was better it's easy to get get uh, get the cooking loss into half when using a pre rigor meat but the taste is it's not so tasty but the the um, uh, paleolithic people were not uh, after taste they just enjoyed that they had something to eat the preservation methods that were used were cooking smoking drying and in northern areas also keeping in cold or even let the meat to freeze so may have been started to add, add uh, uh, about 2000 years ago and then also nitrate that turned to nitrite was present as salt in purity and improving the uh, uh, capability. Sausages were prepared for at least 5000 years for instance salami type sausage but also cooked products that contained meats and organs and blood plus salt. These are still uh, slaughtering uh, uh, paintings and drawings. And then hygienic rules. Because of the problem they became hygienic rules, legislation, and they were give, given a, a few hundreds of years ago for meat handling, for using of slaughtering of sick animals or using dead animals and selling them. Also, the rules for animal husbandry were given to protect drinking water. It was regulated where dead animals may be, may be buried. buried. Uh, the official inspection started rather late in 18th century and it was not, not much developed even uh, 100 years ago. 
and the real development was actually a result of World War II. Still many countries, uh, uh, the methods of immediate cooking and quick use is, is, is there. It can be said that there, um, there is still much to be done for hygiene on a global level. Meat products uh, in middle age uh, sausages were the most used keeping methods or whole meat uh, uh, salted products. Because of the uh, uh, lack of refrigerator and storage, uh, uh, the sausage use was most uh, usual in most places where the people lived and the fast turnover was useful. The log logistic channel was short, meat was consumed close to the slaughter location. Uh, the keeping time was improved by surface drying because there were not uh, humid coolers uh, and the drying was slowing the, the surface spoilage. One way was to keep uh, the sausages and other cooked product uh, and smoked, smoked meat sunken in oil, which was similar to vacuum packaging because there is not uh, oil, in, uh, there is not uh, oxygen in, in uh, oil. I wonder whether there was a risk for Clostridium botulinum that I don't know. Um, which I don't know. Uh, spontaneous fermentation was actually also used, uh, which testifies the evidences the uh, cultural and uh, cultural information and information evolution. The instructions uh, for common practices about the contents of sausages started to ex ex uh, 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 exist. There is the classical story of drawing sausage makers who had make, made a sausage of a dog meat in the Tiber River. Uh, the microbial hazards were identified Clostridium botulinum derived from Latin word botulus and there were certainly other types of uh, food intoxication and inf inflammations uh, due to the sausages. There were old orders, even in Old Testament, in Bible, uh, about use of salt with meat. Meat, uh, salt is a sign of God's covenant. You must not forget salt. And these are uh, meat, uh, meat handling and, and uh, shops. And then finally, the last thing is religious aspect. During the old age, the human-animal relationship was different. People really respected animals. Slaughtering had a mystical dim dimension. Uh, it was a ritual sacrificed to God. And religion uh, is better than laws and police because the moral code is always with you and you cannot uh, hide the crimes and wrong things from God. So blood has a specific meaning, also some organs and there are also uh, in the uh, Bible, the book of Moses number three has very detailed instructions. And another thing is, uh, are the holy animals like cattle in India. And there is another uh, way of understanding things uh, through the religion for, uh, is the safety aspect. Probably the pigs in uh, uh, Islamic countries or wider, wider in near Asia are not used and that could be uh, deriving from a trichina um, uh, uh, in, in those pigs. Slaughtering 
is also to provide a fresh meat for honored guests. So when the guests came, they immediately slaughter, slaughter uh, a sheep and served meat that wasn't spoiled yet. So these are ritual, uh, slaughtering ritual uh, in different countries. So my concluding uh, slide is as follows. We have uh, the evolution, that is food supply protection for uh, uh, animals, man included, reproduc reproduction and information, increase of information. So remembering that w we also are animals, we are bound to our bodies and that way we are bound to the biological world and we cannot it never escape that fact um, the idea of starting to hunt triggered the human development and this solved all the basic evolutional factors in the in the uh, within the big changes that took place in the uh, ecological niche of uh, people of that type, uh, time. Later, much later, four million years later, crop production and animal husbandry solved the food supply problems and, and intensified the societal uh, development. Uh, meat is a very good condensed food commodity commodity when consumed in moderation man is an omnivorous animal but in the current environmental and nutritional aspects as animal welfare aspect must be respect and solved to the extent we possibly can meat has created humans and is still deeply relevant to our lives, physiologically and mentally. So, questions and comments. Or, which way it should be? I think that it could be that way that the reindeer asks from us. Actually, I have more comments and questions for you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Polani.